by the way, I want to give a, a more kind of time and to introduce about Juanqi's new work. I think it makes a little bit more sense that uh, you can see the kind of connection from 1999 until now, he's still kind of working on this kind of uh, so-called investigating in a certain kind of location um, and focusing on the issue of people living around. Um, of course, of course, the question is always related with, you know, what that means behind the location and the people's life and also the political situation of the country. So this is something I found it this morning, actually, on, um, on Google Earth. Because it, that's what he's working on, that's the new film. It's called The Big Letters. This has been used since 1968. That's how the Chinese um, army train their, their uh, pilot. Um, but without actually um, a kind of uh, direction with numbers or something related like um, so-called to the international standard but to making 30 letters in only the Chinese phrases with a meaning of the revolution time. So I'm just make the uh, little kind of screenshot that um, just gave a, a bit of an idea of how and where these kind of places are located. So this is one is called uh, Chairman Mao Live Forever. This one is called Serve the People. And this is one we only fight for the day and night. And we learn from the struggle. Get rid of the problem and, and the difficulties to get a victory. I mean, these locations are not only kind of trained for the pilot, they're also trained our uh, first man goes to the universe, Mr. Yang Li Wei. In 2003, he was also trained there. But now this place become obviously public because it's no longer kind of secret. But I think for the director, he's very much interested in this kind of abundant, so-called uh, abundant areas with this uh, huge kind of leftover of the monument of the political means. And here are some live photos from him that because he injured himself around there, so he could not really present this work himself. And I'd like to share. And this is still there. This is in real time that you might see um, like tracks around here, like because people still can be using this area. But I don't, tell, uh, don't ask me why the letters are, are there and construct by what. Um, there must be something. It's like a, a kind of a more kind of a modern wonder still kind of there, living there um, in the desert. So you can see the actual area, that's a photo he took. So that's a film crew working on this project. And that's a filmmaker. So finally I'm joking with him that he lay down, I mean the gastro, I mean the position is very much like Ai Weiwei. So maybe that reminds something about you know, an injured artist. Um, and to reflect on this kind of situation, maybe he touched something, the mystery power um, that finally hurt his knee. So he need to stay in the hospital for about three months.
to to get rid of this this knee problem. So, and I would like to show um, one more. One more um, trailer from the film I produced. He also made it, which is like he filmed it 12, uh, 13 years ago in this, in this area, which is like a huge area contains desert and also the Muslim people. And um, the film is very much about the kind of uh, looking for or longing for love or uh, get, just get on, on the road and visiting all the locations uh, with a poet friend together. And the film um, made it again only by two people, because his work is always like this. It's like working with a very minimum number of people and very minimum um, technical situation, um, and to accomplish um, so-called a, a feature work. That this work is about 103 minutes. We shown this year in the Rotterdam Film Festival, and we got Asian Prize, the biggest Asian Prize, and. Um, yeah, so I think um, this time uh, there must be a meaning that we didn't choose to show this film, but I think to share the trailer is also quite meaningful um, to, you know, to give it to the director. Mama 在插路高头我是过几趟大错但没是几肯定错因为这些是不要的这些我一家头在那个隔壁上头我甚至没啥么子可以想这是一路长了过隔一起能想到啥Now I can uh, speak for myself. It's my work. And I choose this title because I think um, this is what Christoph asked me for to travel to here. And I think it's very important to think about the local issues, which I think, okay, what means India? When I search on India, India then I get this first thing pop up called India Square. So then I think, okay, where's India Square? India Square is not in India, it's in America. Then I think that's very interesting because this is something that I kind of understand more and more of so-called this kind of shifting understanding of culture in our in our contemporary art world. Uh, for example, in the last 10 years, there's a lot of things we talk about, it's so-called the Chinatown issues, because um, as a Chinese, um, yeah, apart from this so-called, um, apart from this um, Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou, and the Hong Kong situation, that a lot of time we're kind of investigating in the other needs, in the other needs of understanding um, what that means really, you know, when a culture really travels. And with my own practice as a curator, 
and this has become something I'm highly concerned. In 2008, I was curating a show focusing on this kind of nomadic culture with the Mongolian issues in my project. And of course, here, I'm failed with the topic with my colleagues because both of them are, are ill. Because I think, you know, this is kind of topic we can start to work on. It's not only um, uh, doing a presentation here. I think the presentation is very much, very much also related in conducting a project of thinking the culture is shifting today. And um, so by thinking of that, um, we have to define what is otherness, what is me. So be between India and me, this is something is not only about me, it's also about my culture. It's about my culture showing here. And um, so this is what I get from the internet. And then this is also something I found uh, very important to know that this is a random picture. I wonder uh, why this picture are so convincing about the culture that I projected. And why people remind unknown with their image represent the public and the culture Indian, by Indian food and street life. And the images belong to someone who took the photo because it is art. This is common way to judge the Indian color, street, and the people. And this is me. This is me in 2005 on a famous fashion magazine. The story is constructed with my previous job as a chef. It is, can be a montage or PS photo. The image belongs to the photographer and me. And this person you might not know, but if you could read, is actually Ai Weiwei in 1983. And I think it's pretty interesting that normally that everybody knows about this man. It's really a worldwide knowing uh, faces. But I don't think that many people know his face in the 1983. Because he spent, I think, more than 12 years in New York as an artist. And also he creating something quite fascinating, he created something that very much engaged in the so-called the Chinese culture scene that a lot of famous people now, nowadays, are visiting New York and they were stayed in his house. So he have a lot of friends, a lot of networking stuff that make his life in a way easier when he come back to China in the, in the 90s by the meaning of visiting his father. But his father is also one of the major politician, as a good friend of Mao. So I think this is something like, I found this very fascinating of how a life being constructed with those kind of images, and what that image tells us. This you, you uh, of course, this you know. But again, with this, with this picture you might not understand, or you might not know as well, because this is our president now, in 1984. And um, again, I'm very, mu very much interested in what images, what kind of data could provide and for us to understand better what is now. And here, I'm getting very suspicious of this photo because inside the photo, he supposed to visit um, the villagers. And for me, the villagers are too clean. Imagine 1984, People were not dressed up like that, only if they have ceremonies, uh, special occasions, and they would. And the, post, the person poses in the center, uh, surrounded by the old, and the people have their curiosity, all looking into the camera or on him. I mean, this is, for me, is, of course, this is kind of a highly constructed, uh, my thought, that people have been used for many years since photography was invented. So I think that's also interesting that these been used a lot in the public campaign and also in the media. And highlight from the left to the right, creating a beautiful shadow on the faces 
It might be the artistic input of this work. And this is him now. And he is also a friend of Ai Weiwei, a friend of his father. And of course, if we look at this, then I think, okay, this is kind of certainly opened up, you know, what the, the connection of so-called the constructed images and what the political issues and, and whatever the information behind it, these kind of photos. And of course, only in the last 10 years, this photo been rediscovered as a setup. Because this man is called Lei Feng. He's a very famous army person as the model of, of all good. He helped the people in the night, he donated money to the poor, and he do a lot of good things. So he become the so-called model of the new society since the 1960s. And, um, and you can see that, again, this kind of constructed photo with his colleagues and with what he's reading, it's the book written by Mao. And in 1957, this is Mao, surrounded by the Communist Youth Legal, which is, again, you can tell that people are highly professionally working on this kind of subject and working on it professionally to indicate and to dedicate this kind of information to the wider public um, of China and also internationally. And how artists work on it. Recently, there's one artist, Wang Gongxin. He worked on this the famous photo of Lei Feng reading Mao book. And he's working on it to actually to try to understand if he catches something that uh, in common from people's gesture. That you can see people reading the book on the left hand side in, in their own private car, or the old lady in the, uh, lady in the middle reading something maybe like a recipes in, their, in her kitchen, and some person like playing with their mobile phones. And again, from this kind of gesture, it's kind of a, you know, the artist is trying to try, try to um, deconstruct de de the idea of the politics, but also he make it very political. And what do we know about China? Here, I would like to show a very small film, a video work done by a young artist, an animator. And he did this project in 2013. But the projects actually run, I mean, he were spending about three years on the project. So more than half a million of this so-called wasted film have been collected from anonymous people. But from there, I'm highly interested of, you know, what is left there in so-called these issues of public sphere, of architecture, sculpture, and people, how they dress, what their kind of high style are. I think that's very interesting that it still reminds us there were a history, but not far from now. So I think I try to skip some of these. And of course, from daily life to you know the common location they're going, and the kind of activity normally people done, and they have a kind of fin fin uh, similarity in their gesture and, and present themselves in the photography. Family photos, and of course. The famous Tiananmen Square is always the location that people take a lot of photos for. So I try to skip that. Uh, the restrained public, 
This is something people doesn't really know, but I have to say I'm suffering a lot every time I'm going back to China, because this is about that. This is about the Great Firewall. I mean, this is a topic since 2000. I think since 2006, becomes so close to everybody in China because this is kind of blocking everything, the moment. And、um, before、um, Google stepped out of China, and now even Gmail is completely kind of blocked it. And people even invent a new、um, software that kind of attacking all the VPNs software as well. So that means you even use VPN, you get a lot of difficulty to get online, and that related with、uh, the major search, searching engine,、uh, searching engines, and also related to all our communications. And I, I cannot explain to people that my Gmail is not working, and now I'm kind of used to it. So you know, starting from Twitter, Facebook is not working. It's okay because I live in Zurich. You know, sometimes I spend one week, or two weeks, can,、uh, can be four weeks in. China, but after that, I'm started using Twitter and Facebook, and now Gmail is really paying us because I have to really think about using other kind of、uh, email account to get it more communicated、uh, with other people or the people on the world. But always, I think it's interesting that what art artists reflect on this kind of situation in 2009, Ajiao, one of the Shanghai-based artists, work on this project called. The Great Firewall list. So he made a kind of so-called. He steal the list, the information from this kind of band machine, and he creating this kind of a sculpture, and they print the information out. Of course, he cannot make it too obvious that this information is about the band information of our Great Firewall. So he still used the code. I mean, to print something just completely digital,、um, which is like people. Doesn't does not really understand what that means, but it's all related with this issue. And that's the location that he showed the work. So I think what the public means is is something like is is something like、um, so called. It's too big to imagine, and it's too real to face because that's the place we're talking about the Great Firewall issues. But actually, it's it's real in. It's situated in one of the location inside this M50, so-called the art、um, community area in Shanghai, the major one. And public could artist artist would.、Um, that's the work from、um, English artist Chris Paul Daniel. That he turned this kind of public public residency area into a piece of a video. Um, almost like audiovisual by using the pop local pop songs. So I would not show much of this.、Um, and this work done by Li Liao is like with idea of so-called the、uh, social sculpture that the artists are try getting kind of hiking into the social sculpture. You know, with the issue of this folk、uh, songs,、um, the death,、uh, suiciding. Problem. He himself, the artist, try to apply as a worker, and he actually stayed in the factory, working in the factory with with how many? I think three hundred thousand people in this in this area. They produce for Mac, for you know, for big companies, and he hide there for forty five days.、Um, and that's piece. Of, that's one of a piece. One of his piece of work. And this is a bit of the shows shows a little bit of how this company、um, and factory situated in Wuhan, Hangzhou, Yantai. I mean, many locations, and maybe a million or two million or three million of people working there. As you can you can tell that from the right hand side,、um, and their way of working is like robot mix of army style. And this is、uh, artist、um, Hu Jieming's work, and this work fully produced in in Switzerland, but showing in China again. Artists from his generation are very much investigating in. He's very much concerned and investigating in this so-called the history of the last hundred years. So there's about hundred projectors in the room projecting all these kind of、uh, constellations that he found in the archive.
And this is Roman Signer work in 2013 in Shanghai. And we installed it, the work, in one of the most popular areas, which is called Bound 3 on the Bound. So this is the bound area. Yeah. And this is work from a Swiss artist, Yves Nasshammer, and um, in 2013 as well, that um, I showed this work in the K11 building in Shanghai, which is like we try to find a place completely not really useful for the whole kind of a function of, of a commercial building. But this is a place for the security, for the fire exit. So we turn this security and fire exit to communicate with the, the main hall of the exhibition place and also the outside area as one rabbit hole place. So this is like a three floor project we developed with artists together with Eve and um, Bernd. So I think this is about something, I think it's very interesting that how artists using this kind of abundant space um, in the public area. And this is uh, the commercial space that the, the public um, and most, most public area um, in Shanghai. And also, at the same place, we commissioned another artist called Lulu Li. She did a project on the facade of the, of the building um, that normally she turns this so-called uh, computer experience into a general public experience. And also she continued working on the project that people can submit photos on this topic of where are you? And who take these photos of where are you can submit it to her website to kind of re-emerge into her uh, huge universe of this computer experience of this um, conceptual work. And this is the building. And so at the end, um, our show in 2013 received about 160,000 people. So I think that's something uh, very interesting because this is something that we called, we kind of sculpturing the public, but also the, the public are kind of sculpturing us as well of understand, you know, what kind of art we're using in the public space. And th there's another kind of public space and there's another kind of way of using their work. So this is a work from Natis Yuan Gong. He invent with technology and his briefness, he invent something that highly illegal, and, but he used it in Shanghai. A flying object. And try to attack the, the Pearl Tower, which is like one of the major iconic buildings in Shanghai. release the smoke in the public space. Of course, it's highly dangerous because they have to learn to do it as fast as possible and to run away as fast as possible. Nobody catches them. And of course, you know, again, this building there yeah, are used for the Mission Impossible to just let you understand, you know, what means the image in the public existing that people think it represents a certain kind of location, a certain kind of culture. And this is a work um, I invite uh, Roy Ikeda did in Shanghai last year. It's called the Radar Shanghai. It's actually about mapping the universe um, in Shanghai and to understand what that connection between the Earth and the universe. <laughs> and it's about a 35 meter long, 12 meter high, a huge, huge work that people kind of get in front of it and get Im immersed with work. And this is the location where I did the show. It's called 21st Century Minsheng Art Museum in Shanghai. If you got a chance, 
please visit because that was a leftover building actually from the expo time. It, it used for the French pavilion in 2010. And then another architect came to modify it and change it into an art museum. And the bank runs it behind. I think um, that's it because I think uh, this is something just to open up um, if you have more questions because I cannot as required to answer, I mean to, to prepare something that touches the whole issue of, of China because I think China is bigger than even I imagine because a lot of places I haven't been to myself. So I think this is to, I mean for the, for the beginning I think this is enough. Thank you very much.